Steve, welcome to Chicago. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Tell everyone where, where, where you're from. I'm from California, and I'm proud to tell you I'm here with all the answers because we've made all the mistakes. Uh, <laughs> you name it, we've done it. Uh, well, Steve, before we delve into our, uh, our topic area, I do want people to hear a little bit more about you personally. I know you told me that you studied to be an architect and, and things evolved a little bit, but tell us about your passion, your personal, a little of your personal background and how you ended up in this position at National Corps and share what National Corps is doing as well. Sure, happy to, and thank you very much. I love the post-dance slot on the agenda. Thank you very much. We, we were going to ask you to dance. Yeah, but... that's good. Okay. I did uh, play chess against the chess team. Yes. Lost two games, yep. so they're pretty good, <laughs> or I'm not. The uh, So I originally thought I wanted to be an architect until I spent a summer drafting, hated it, and said, okay, what's something that's maybe a little bigger than architecture? And my uh, uh, faculty member at the time, well, you can look at city planning. And I thought, oh, perfect. And our motto at the planning school that I attended was planners tell architects where to put it. And so I've enjoyed being a planner ever since. Uh, most of my background has actually been in economic development and community development. But about six years ago, I agreed to a one-year stint as the CEO of National Community Renaissance, affordable housing developer. And I've been stuck there ever since. It's been a great learning experience. Uh, National Corps is a fascinating organization. This is our 26th year. Our two founders founded it. They were real estate developers, and they founded it because they both grew up either without housing or in public housing and had a real heart for providing quality housing to people. And that's a big part of National Corps' mission. Um, California, Arkansas, Texas, and Florida is where we're currently doing business, although we have been asked to take a look at a site in Toledo, Ohio. So we're, uh, who knows, we may be in a neighborhood near you soon. So talk about the challenges that you all are facing on a daily basis. You're seeing distress in communities. We've been talking about it. And you're trying to figure out how to bring capital and make it effectively deployed um, and doing a lot more than a lot of the incentives that are set up in the system, which you sure. described to me as, unfortunately, in affordable housing development, developers are incentivized to keep people in assisted housing and talk about that that dynamic and some of the other uh, challenges or silos that National Corps is trying to break through. Sure, absolutely. So how many of you think the world is changing? Oh, this is not a complicated question. <laughs> how many of you, this is the post-lunch coma, you gotta get the blood out of your stomach and into, how many of you are excited by the changes that are happening? How many of you are scared to death by the changes that are happening? How many of you know while you're here today, you're going to have to adapt to changes that occurred back at the office when you get back there? And so when the world changes and you don't, you lose. And our world is changing dramatically and it's creating significant challenges. So what we are is we're a traditional affordable housing developer. And traditional affordable housing developers develop housing. And what we've come to the conclusion of, housing in and of itself, by itself, is incredibly necessary, but not sufficient. And one of the challenges we have, though, is the incentives that are in the system drive what a lot of business decisions are made by organizations. And although we're a nonprofit 501c3, we're a business, because if we don't make a profit, we don't survive as an organization. Yep. So we have to play the cards we're dealt. We have to play the game the way it is. And unfortunately, the direction things are going are to higher and higher levels of specificity. And this is one of the challenges that we all have to grapple with. So we're under construction right now, a project in San Diego, where half of the population, the funding is targeted towards chronically homeless. How many of you have helped target, challenge chronically homeless? I see that one hand, Three, two. One, two. Chronically three, homeless four. veterans. How many of you worked with veterans? I see those hands. With AIDS. How many of you worked with chronically homeless veterans with AIDS as a targeted population? And so that's one of the challenges we have is the funding is getting narrower and narrower towards populations with higher level of acuity, and then we're res our responsibility is to build a community, an integrated community. And so that's one of the big challenges that we have to understand to say, okay, how do we then take a step back and try and understand the system as a whole, which is trying to change the neighborhood, change the community. 
and yet so many of the resources that are available are getting narrower and narrower slices. So what we're trying to do at National Core is change from being an affordable housing developer to a community developer, a community redeveloper, and try and understand how do we knit together normally resources that do not come together in order to transform a community. And that's a big part, that's kind of point number one that I would encourage all of us to think about is who's not in the room today that is critical to the successful transformation of neighborhoods? So how many hospital CEOs are in the room today? So that would just be a, an easy classic example that housing is a critical social determinant of health. Everybody knows it. Mm -hmm. So how do we get health care to invest in housing as a part of the overall health continuum? Because if we don't, if 18% of our economy is in health now, if we don't get those resources dealing with the actual cause of a lot of health dysfunctions, then we're not going to have the resources necessary to transform communities. And that's just one example that the silos are tall and the walls are thick, which is totally rational because the issues are increasingly complicated. And so just my final point on silos and think about this is transportation planners talk to transportation planners. How many transportation planners are in the room? Education talks to education. How many educators are in the room? There are some. Housing talks to housing, economic development to economic development, et cetera, et cetera. And it's totally rational because the issues are increasingly complicated. They don't have time to bridge over into the other silos and think systemically about how do we come together to work to transform a neighborhood. And so that's point number one, is the silos are hard to manage. And I have two handouts that are going around today. One of the ways that we deal with the silos really well is in a disaster. When we have in a disaster, and Dr. Oz and I wrote an editorial for the Houston Chronicle after the hurricane, agencies come together during a disaster and forget about the rules. They're there to solve the problem, fix the problem. As time goes on after the disaster, people go back into their silos. So the question is, how do we keep people out of their silos after the disaster to make transformation? And so I want you to talk about, uh, we, we know that housing is catalytic. It's one of the uh, cornerstones that has to be taken care of. Uh, how should success be defined? Because I think that point is critical to understand. What does success mean to you all? Obviously, you're doing more wraparound stuff to build that community. But what does success look like? Okay, what the speaker talked about earlier is the importance of measuring outcomes, not just outputs, is really important. But how we define the outcomes is equally as important. And one of the challenges in the affordable housing industry is our outcomes are defined as producing housing. So the more housing units we produce, the better. There's no measurement, nor is there any incentive for us to help the residents of our projects, our properties, to move out. The definition of success is to keep the property full. The easiest way to keep the property full is to keep everybody you have from the very beginning in the property. We as an organization, though, we view our mission as helping people move out. We view our properties as a launching pad, not a landing pad. How can we use stable housing as a basis upon which families can get the skills and abilities and reset the stresses and tensions to be able to be able to then launch into the market sector and have opportunities along those lines. But unfortunately, the system doesn't define that as success. And so we're not measured for that. And the disincentives for the families living in our properties are equally as high. Yeah. For them to make the leap from secure, stable, high quality housing into the uncertainty of the market is an enormous risk proposition for those families. Yeah. So one of the things we have to think about is how do we define success how do we create systems that enable housers and the families living in our properties to want the same success, which is upward, moving upward, you know, upward mobility, independence, et cetera? And so wrapping around the, uh, the job opportunities, having those relationships across the silos where there's, a good, there's good technical education sure. in a community and having those re relationships so that people know where the job opportunities are, where there's childcare, um, for, you know, mothers and dads who, who sure. need to work, all that stuff. And the uh, Secretary Carson's Envision Centers are a great model, a great example of an effort to bring together the various agencies, both governmental, nonprofit, for-profit organizations, to be able to address the needs of residents of public housing in a holistic way with the wraparound services. 
great model for doing that. We also then need to bring those same partners to bear to actually invest in the community for the developments that are necessary. But thinking, once again, systemically, and it, there's not one size fits all. We heard, we've heard a lot about Chicago, the 77 neighborhoods in Chicago, all have different issues and challenges. Yep. Well, across the country, it's the same thing. You've seen one community that has its issues. You've seen one community that's had its issues. And so we need to, as has been, was talked about earlier, listen to the people in the community, understand the nature of the community, understand the market forces that are at work in the community, and then begin to think about the solutions that would be best for that community. Great. Well, I know there's an Envision Center that's uh, launched in Detroit, and they're getting ready to roll them out, and I think it's critical to have input from folks like you. So, Steve, thanks for your time. Thanks for sharing with us and being here and supporting the Kemp Foundation uh, and making this event better. Absolutely. Thank you for what you do, and thanks, thank Steve. you for all of what you do.